I'm Tony Taylor. Are you here for Lead Us Lead the podcast? Let's go. Hey, how did you beat me? Look, let me tell you about this podcast. We got like five seconds. Lead Us Lead the podcast is about leadership. Not just the leader without, but the lead within. All of these leaders that I'm talking to across the country, well, across the world now, they have one thing in common, and that's that they have overcome some insurmountable obstacles to get to where they're at today. Come on, let's go. Ooh, I love that. I always feel like I'm teleporting into a, a, a space. A space of, uh, well, I guess we are going into a space. Welcome to Leaders Lead the Podcast. Uh, I hope that you're having an amazing day. And our goal with this show is to make sure that you're better today than you were yesterday. And for us to keep that cycle going. And today is no exception. I'm super excited. I have Dr. Cheryl Wood. She is an executive speaker and development coach. She's a best-selling author. I've checked out two of her books. Oh, my God, they are amazing, and I want to get some secrets about that. And she is a two-time TEDx speaker. And y'all know, if y'all been listening to the show long enough, that is goals for me. That is something that I am on the track for. And um, that's that's kind of how I felt. That's kind of how I found uh, Dr. Cheryl Wood was, I was looking at some of her material and then I start looking at, uh, TEDx and she is the only TEDx speaker that I have found. Right. And I don't want none of my previous guests to beat me up on this, but she's the only TEDx speaker that I found that I would think that, uh, match my energy as far as giving a TEDx. I'm talking about listening to a TEDx and then just leaving it, just being like, Oh my God, I can take over the world. I can do this. And just really being motivated and inspired. She does more than bring a new concept. She inspires you. She empowers you to get out there and go get it. So check out this clip. The possibility of anger being the very emotion that we shun, but should be the emotion that we embrace because it allows us to get out into the world and demand what we want instead of hoping the world gives us what we deserve. After all, in my own experience, what I've witnessed is that when a woman gets angry enough, She typically steps into action to create change. That's exactly what happened to me in that day on 2009. I literally took all the anger I had been experiencing in that moment and I channeled it into passionate movement. I allowed my anger to become fuel for who I was going to become. I started thinking bigger. I started visualizing a different reality in that moment. I started thinking about goals that could become possibilities that ultimately could manifest into realities. Zig Ziglar says, to reach a goal, you have to see the reaching in your own mind before you ever arrive at the goal. Oh, I felt that. (laughs) Oh my God, I gotta tell you, I, before we start, like I wanna say thank you for, for doing this, but I've been watching you from afar. And I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, but I am extremely motivated and inspired by just watching your career. And I want to go and venture to say that uh, I I know that you have an affinity um, for other uh, speakers in your lane. And I know that you have an affinity for one in particular. I want to say that you are my generation of speakers, Lisa Nichols. (laughs) <laughs> thank oh you God, for thank you how are you doing today i'm doing fantastic tony i love that intro video of your great energy right like that's what we do energy is contagious it's infectious and i can see that you are infecting people with some good positive energy and reminding them that they can lead and they can accomplish amazing things in the world so i'm just thrilled to be here in this space and uh thank you for that beautiful compliment I, that that just man that that made my whole day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I uh not trying to make you cry. Everybody come on this show. We usually we're all crying. I got people... have a tissue, box of tissues to come on this show, huh? Oh man, yeah. There's some people, they'll be in the comments saying, No, we can't do this, we can't do this. But luckily, we're not live. Uh today is just you and I, because I wanted to get the goods for myself. This is a good one. <laughs> I've been uh waiting to do this with you for such a long time. Um, I wanted to to go ahead and start off and just saying, 
Um, again, I, I told you how I feel about you and your career. I want to say, um, have you always been such a powerhouse? <laughs> Did you hear the laugh? Did you hear yeah. how, how heartily the laugh came out? Um, I would I would say heck to the nah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, maybe she was hidden deep down inside, but I simply had not, you know, uh, unleashed her yet. I, I believe that all of us have something that's that extra special oomph inside of us. And sometimes it just takes us a little longer to unleash that person, to discover that person, first of all, in order to unleash that person. But also the, the woman that you see now, Dr. Cheryl Wood, you know, that's come from confidence building and over years, it's, this has been a 12 year journey. And I tell people that all the time, you're, you are seeing me and watching me in my sexy chapter 12 of my journey. Ooh, but, I love it. Woo, Tony, chapters one through 11. Woo, you're going to have to sit down and get a cup of coffee for that because there were a lot of ups and downs and highs and lows and a lot of losses. There were a lot of, you know, as the kids say, L's taking the L. There were a lot of L's on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> but through those L's, you you and I both know that that builds character mm -hmm. and it tests how committed you are to the thing you believe is your divine assignment in the world. And I believe all of us have a divine assignment or a unique calling, whatever you want to reference it as um, that has been put on our life and no one else can fulfill that but us. So this woman that you see now that's able to get on stages and speak in front of thousands or hundreds of thousands, that's able to speak on stages with the gurus like Les Brown and Lisa Nichols, that has been formed and shaped over the full journey for the past 12 years. Not just the good parts and the successes, but also the failures, the losses, the setbacks and the challenges. So, yeah, now it's like the Phoenix rising, you know, you can you can emerge from, from the ashes and the things that knock you down that could have knocked you out, but you made a choice that you would keep getting back up so it didn't knock you out. Wow, you're, you're definitely speaking our language. Uh, here on the podcast, we, um, I, I know a lot of times people, when they hear the word leadership, they think that we're gonna talk about, when, when they get ready to listen to the show, they think we're gonna talk about metrics and <laughs> things to do to manipulate people to do certain tasks. And sometimes I'm just like, man, I should just, totally name it something else because this thing grows. It's not just about you know, leading people. It's about uh, leading yourself. And I really, I appreciate you saying and, and talking about, you know, all the steps before you got to the sexy chapter, because, you know, and, and me included, you know, when I first started speaking, I would look at somebody's chapter 12 and base it on my genesis. And I'm just like, this <laughs> is crazy. Why am I doing this to myself? And I love having leaders in, in your specific industry get on here and say, no, that is, that is that's not the case. That is right. not they, the they case. Look, they're in Revelation and you in Genesis. <laughs> yeah. So how can you judge it, man? It's like right. two separate books. You got New Testament. You got yeah. the old. They, they, right. Hey, some of the, there's some characters ain't even in that book that's in that one. So how can you judge it, right? Yes, yes. And you and you just, you never know somebody's full story. I, I tell my clients all the time, if you sit and talk to someone longer than five minutes, you're going to realize they have a story that they don't wear on their face. They don't have a big badge on their forehead that says, oh, I've been through this thing in life, or I yeah. went through this and overcame this in order to get here as this leader that's in front of you. But if you sit and talk to them long enough for more than just five minutes, you will find out every person has a story. And that story typically does include some struggles, some setbacks, some challenges, some roadblocks before they got to where they are in that current season. Wow. That's funny that you say that because I was just out in the hallway at our studio here and somebody said, dude, you are always, always smiling. And I get this all the time. You must be the happiest person on earth. And I'm like, I, I was getting ready to stop them, but I had a show. I had some really important, uh, really important guests. I was getting ready to say, no, you don't know the half of it. Let me tell you what I've been through. And also let me tell you what I'm going through right now. Like you would see that, like, it's not all, it, it's not all peaches and cream over here, but I choose uh, to, to, to make a choice. I choose to make a choice 
I was going to ask you, like in in like regarding that and smiling on the outside and, you know, maybe going through pain on the inside and trying to grow through what you're going through. What is one of the biggest obstacles uh, that you've had to face in order to get to chapter 12? Oh, my God. There have been so many. Like I said, that you know, that's why they say this thing is it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And there are seasons to the journey. And each season could bring a new challenge. It could bring a new setback. It could bring a new obstacle that you didn't even see coming. Um, I'll tell you, last year was one of the biggest challenges I've faced in my life or my journey. I have a twin sister. We're very oh, wow. close. We're two minutes apart. We're thick as thieves. And um, unfortunately, her baby boy, my nephew, passed away last year. Oh. 20 years old. 20, John, Tony. 20. Wow. 20 years old. Great kid, amazing kid, going into his junior year at Morgan State University up in Baltimore, Maryland. He was on a full scholarship to Morgan. He was on the dean's list, so an academic scholar and an athletic scholar. He was the starting wide receiver for the Morgan State Bears, already being looked at by the NFL. We knew he, were, he was going to the Killing NFL. It. You know how you just know? Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't a question. It was just win. And not if, but just win. And unfortunately, died tragically in a motorcycle accident. Oh, I'm so sorry. And when I tell you that is the pain of losing someone that close to you at such a young age is, is its own pain. But then you compound that pain by me watching my sister, my twin sister, go through the pain of losing a child. I have never experienced anything so hard in my life. And it really is. You talked about this a few minutes ago about choices. And it's a choice to get up and keep going. It's a choice to say, you know what? Let's take his life and his legacy and let's make sure it stays alive and vibrant, which means we got to be also in movement, creating our own lives and our own legacies so that we can continue his life and his legacy. Um, so it's every day, whether it's you going through the loss of someone that you love, which a lot of people are going through right now with everything that's been happening over the past two years, yeah. or if it's lost of finances, I have had my times in business where I was broke, broke, busted, and disgusted in business. Broke, busted, and disgusted. Right? And <laughs> everybody was telling, and this especially was in the early stages of my speaker journey, when everybody kept telling me how amazing I was as a speaker. Oh, you're, you're amazing. You're one of the best speakers I've ever heard. And I'm getting all these compliments. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why don't my bank account reflect that? Like, y'all keep telling me how great I am, but ain't nobody writing me a check. And struggling just through that part of, your own mindset being toxic and saying, you ain't, see, you ain't never going to be. See, mm. I told you, you ain't good enough. See, right? Because right? if you were really good enough, you'd be earning money. You'd be generating this. You'd be, and then you start looking around the people around you and comparing yourself. So I've been through all types of ups, downs, highs, lows, and challenges in the business, whether it was related to my mindset in terms of the impact that it had on my money, the money I was generating, the profits I was generating or whether it was the the far left extent of that, of losing someone that I love and wanting to just shut down completely, but understanding that I had a bigger purpose and calling in the world. And if I stop, somebody else is going to stop. Wow. And yeah. that for me is making my life bigger than me. Oh my God. That's, that's amazing. I, I always think about um, the, the Grinch, right? The, the Grinch <laughs> as far as like Christmas and, and it's, it sounds so juvenile and silly when I think about it, but the the Grinch, of course, you know, you could just look at that dude and just tell he went through something to make him uh, so bitter, right? You could tell that he's grieving something, maybe something he didn't have, maybe something he had and, and lost, but he's grieving. And one thing that I noticed about all those stories about the Grinch or some form like a Grinch is the way that when they come back and the way that they come back is by giving to others. Like you always see wow. that, like when it cut scene, he's giving away turkeys and you see that joy uh, come inside of himself. And that's almost the way that um, the way that I look at uh, what it is that you do as being a speaker and, and having this podcast, just like you, I had last year, I was, I was grieving the loss of a loved one that's, that's still alive and that pain Oh my God, I couldn't get out of bed. But the days that I said, you know what, this thing is is way bigger than me yes. are the days that I came in here and I sat down freaking, I mean, heart heavy. I hit record 
And next thing you know, I I, I felt I, I I felt so good. Do do you get that feeling? Is that is is that why you do what you do? Is that is there an element to that? Oh my goodness, yeah. My my life must be bigger than me. It, there's it's not an option. It must be because when you make your life bigger than you, you show up when you don't feel like it. You show up when it makes more sense for you to stay in the bed under the covers. You you show up when things aren't going right. But that's only when your life is bigger than you because if it's about you, guess what? There's no accountability to anybody else other than you. And now you give yourself a, an excuse out of, oh, well, I won't do the podcast today or I'll cancel this thing today. Or I'll do... But when you know other people are watching your, your lead and your leadership, when they are inspired through your journey, whether you're even, especially when you're doing it, when it's tough and when it's challenging, because anybody can get up and do it when it's an easy day. It's a great, oh, it's a great day in the neighborhood today. But when it's tough and you're grieving that person, you're grieving that thing, you're, you've lost a contract or whatever the thing is that's happening, your children getting on your nerves, whatever the thing might be happening and you show up anyway, now without words, but rather through modeling it, you are giving other people permission to number one, know that the journey is never going to be perfect. Number two, to also show up as powerful leaders who come and bring the best of themselves, even in the midst of crisis, trauma, breakdown, challenges, obstacles, setbacks, all those things that are going to happen. It's not a matter of if they're going to happen. They're, they're going to happen. They have to be a part of your journey. Because as I like to say to my clients, if you ain't been through nothing, you can't teach me nothing. <laughs> yes. How can you teach me? How can you lead me? And you've never been in the pit. You've never been in the valley where you're like, I don't even feel like doing this today. Or I don't know how I'm going to pull myself together to do this today. If you haven't had to pull yourself out of your own stinking thinking and your own toxic mindset and, and self-sabotaging beliefs and your own fears, if you haven't had to do that, how can you possibly lead me? So, so you do believe, because that's a question I ask, I ask a bunch of leaders, because I noticed um, when I first started doing this show, I noticed a commonality between the, the greats, like the greats that I've worked under, worked for, worked beside, and the greats when I started you know, interviewing people such as yourself, is that they have all overcame something. None of them were just like, hey, you know what, dude, I was born. I got uh, a whole bunch of money, silver spoon. Then I got a platinum spoon. Like I never heard that. It's always like this dark place. And I, I'm just like, man, that that's it. So do, do you believe that great leaders must go through adversity? I Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, again, the adversity might be external, but a lot of times the adversity is internal. It's wow. it's getting to a place of powerful leadership and accepting the responsibility that comes with leadership, even in spite of sometimes feeling like, you know, that imposter syndrome that so many, especially when I talk about women leaders, man, there's so many who suffer with lack of confidence, lack of mm. belief in self, imposter syndrome, but I don't have this, this and this. And, and they focus more on what they don't have instead of what they do possess that will allow them to lead others into their next level of elevation, of transformation. And I can only speak on that because I used to be that woman. Wow. Uh, I grew up as a, as a young girl, I grew up in an environment of poverty. I grew up in a, a, an inner city housing project called Lafayette Projects in Baltimore, Maryland. And that was not a pretty environment to grow up in. Literally every day that I walked out of my house, you knew that every, all, every other corner was gonna have a drug man on the corner. Mm -hmm. And they're distributing drugs in our own community. And then the sad part was on the opposite corners where the people who were strung out on the drugs that the drug man sold them. And then in that environment, you see teenage pregnancy, girls 12 and 13. You see people who go to work every day and they're so beneath the poverty line, they cannot even put food on the table for their families. And they're in a space of struggle and scarcity. When you grow up in that environment, nobody's telling you you can be a giant in the world. Mm -hmm. Nobody's telling you and reaffirming for you that you can lead others into greatness. All you're worried about is how do I get out of here alive, number one, unscathed by all the vices that are happening around me. Now, for me, thankfully, I had a mother who was very strict and she kept me on the straight and narrow and she didn't play no games. Uh, but when I graduated high school out of Baltimore, Maryland, Tony, I didn't go off to college. 
for four years of self-discovery and higher learning. No, my path was get a job so you can get out of poverty. Wow. So for a long time, I was my own worst critic. I was my own worst toxic friend or enemy, if you will, because I kept saying, you can't possibly grow up in, in scarcity and poverty and not have a college degree, a piece of paper that says you're good enough and think that you're going to be an amazing leader in the world. There's no way nobody's ever going to accept you. They're not going to embrace you there. And, and I literally held myself stuck in hostage in a space of mediocrity because in my own mind, I was saying, you can't possibly be the, the picture of what someone would look like and say, oh, that's, that's going to be the person that's going to lead me into my next. So I had to press through all of those things and go through just a journey of mindset shifting, you know, and, and resetting and realizing that I get to write the next chapter to my life and my journey, that nobody else has that permission to write the chapter except me. And nobody gets to tell me that I have to be a product of the environment that I grew up in or the product of my past experiences. No, I get to turn the page and start writing a new chapter. And if, and if I did decide that I want to be a leader who's leading other people into their next level and into unleashing the, their voices and their impact and sharing their gifts with the world, then who, who are you, anyone outside of me, to tell me that I can't? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's like music to my ears. I'm from, uh, I'm from Gary, Indiana. And just like you described, I remember growing up and um, – kind of go on the, the, the side that you don't necessarily want to go through. Like I was impressed by the people that were standing on the corner selling drugs for whatever reason. I was so impressed by them. I was impressed by uh, the, the gangbangers in the movies that was doing drive-bys or the people that I knew that was locked up. I don't know why I thought that was so cool. And just hearing you talk, it, it it's almost, it takes me down those streets. Like I, I love the way that you talk because I can, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. I can smell it. I could just, I'm just there. You're such a, an amazing storyteller. Um, how, did, wh how did you get into speaking? Uh, so I always say speaking found me. I didn't find it. And it found me because I was in motion. So, so often we keep ourselves stuck where we are because it's like, you know, we're waiting for the answer to fall into our lap, <laughs> but really the thing that you are are seeking is seeking you. And so you have to be in movement towards something, even when you don't know the how. You know, I didn't know how I was going to change my life. All I know is in 2009, after spending about 15 years in the corporate sector as a legal secretary, um, I was a mother of three and I was I was just done with taking the best parts of me into a space that didn't value me. And then bringing the worst parts of me home to the people I said I love the most. And I wanted something different. I, I wanted freedom. I wanted time freedom. I wanted financial freedom. I wanted creative freedom. I wanted to be actively engaged as a mother for my children. I wanted to be the best role model that my children could ever follow. I didn't want them to have to look outside of our household for a role model. Someone who decided that they were going to change their circumstances or decided to take control of their life or decided to be a leader in the world. I wanted to be that model. So in 2009, I was still working a corporate job as a legal secretary, you know, making about $75,000 a year. And I decided that I was going to disrupt my norm, right? Because how do you experience something different until you disrupt everything you've ever done and you attempt something different, even when you don't know the how? Yeah. So I was clueless. I didn't have, you know, I didn't go to college. I didn't have a business degree, a marketing degree. I didn't know how this thing was going to work. All I knew was I in my mind, um, equated entrepreneurship with an ability to create the freedom that I desired and to somehow be able to position myself to be able to lead other people and usher other people into greatness as well. So in 09, I'm still working my full-time corporate job and I start this little t-shirt business. The t-shirt business was called Moms Are the Best. Now, here's the reason why I started the t-shirt business. I didn't want to chase money, Tony. I didn't want to mm. chase money because I know when you chase money, eventually you run out of steam. Oh, yeah. But if you chase and pursue something that really stems from your heart and your soul, you will never run out of energy, right? Like if you notice that parents, moms, we just can't stop talking about our kids. It don't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter how long. We always got something to say about our children. Even so, if it's good or bad, right? Right, right. <laughs> so in that moment, after years of suffering infertility, 
I had these three beautiful children that God had blessed me with, and I was passionate about motherhood. And I was in the midst and the thick of what motherhood really is, right? It's the toughest job I've ever had in my life. And so I connected my business to that. So I created a business called Moms Are the Best. It was a t-shirt business. And all the slogans and the sayings were designed to celebrate mothers and women and everything we give to the world and society. Start the business. I go out on the weekends, Tony, and I set up a table at vendor events and flea markets and conferences and trade shows trying to sell a t-shirt, trying to figure out this entrepreneurship thing, clueless. And sometimes I come back home and I didn't sell anything or I only sold one or two t-shirts. And my husband's like, oh, so you've been gone for eight hours and you sold two t-shirts, huh? So how's this, how's this going? Like, you going to keep doing it? And my commitment, <laughs> Tony, my commit with, commitment wasn't about how much money I made. My commitment was to keep showing up. Oh, you made a commitment to being committed. Committed Ooh. to being committed. Like, even when it didn't produce what I thought I wanted it to produce, even when what I want to manifest didn't manifest immediately or, or in that day. And I just kept showing up. And it was it was almost like this. Uh, what, is, what do they call it? The uh, like an unconscious consciousness. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you are mm -hmm. conscious that you want something, but you're unconscious that you are doing this process that seemed like it ain't getting you no results. I did that for 18 months while still working my full time job. And thank God for the commitment to be committed. Because after 18 months, I get a phone call from someone at Morgan State University out of the blue, seemingly out of the blue, right? But I believe divinely orchestrated because mm -hmm. I was showing up. Mm -hmm. And the person says, um, I wasn't Dr. Wood yet. So they was like, uh, Mrs. Wood, we heard about your t-shirt business. Moms are the best. And what we would love to do, we have this annual women's conference that we're hosting at Morgan State. We get sometimes upwards of 300 women who come to the conference. We want you to come and speak. And teach other moms in this community how to start their own businesses. Do you know what I did, Tony? I burst out laughing. I was like, you, you <laughs> really? Not me, right? Yeah, you, you the doubt the wrong number because you are not looking for me. I am not a speaker. I didn't feel qualified. I, I, was, I was so confused. Like, why are you calling me? I don't speak. And it was in that moment that I was able to distinguish the difference between being qualified versus being called and equipped. Wow. Like some of us, we just, we're we so busy checking off the list of, list of qualifications that we miss out on those golden opportunities that sometimes are once in a lifetime opportunity. And our job really is to say yes more than we say no, is to say yes in spite of feeling unqualified and knowing that you've been equipped for that opportunity and you've been in motion towards producing that opportunity, which is why the opportunity presented itself to you. So I gave myself permission to say yes. It was September 18th, 2010. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was nervous. My palms were sweaty. My heart was racing. And in that moment, I was like, why did I say yes? I should have said no. <laughs> like, I'm not qualified for this. And I just took a few deep breaths and reminded myself, Cheryl, there is a reason that you are here. I didn't know what the reason was until after I opened my mouth on that stage. And in that moment, as I started going through my presentation, my very first presentation, there was something that just woke up in me. Like it came to life. Like it just, it lifted my spirits. My soul felt alive. And then I wow. looked out in the audience and I see people in the audience reacting to my stories and reacting to the information I'm sharing and reacting to the inspiration. And some of them are literally wiping tears from their eyes as I'm sharing. And some of them are, they're taking copious notes in their books. And I'm like, wait, what? Something what did I say? <laughs> right, I'm like, and I knew in that moment, on that day, September 18, 2010, I wanted to feel that way for the rest of my life by making other people feel that way for the rest of my life. So if I can wake up hope and give inspiration to people and speak life into their dreams and possibilities for the rest of my life, and it makes me feel this good, sign me up for that for the rest of my life. And that was the beginning of the journey. And I knew from that day, I... I was like, oh, I will be a world-renowned international motivational speaker. In fact, right after that, I started going to networking events <laughs> and I would introduce myself. Oh, I'm Cheryl Wood, international motivational speaker. I hadn't even left Baltimore, Maryland yet, but I was already introducing myself how I envisioned myself because Zig Ziglar says in order to reach a goal, you got to see the reaching in your own mind before you ever accomplish the goal. So I could already see it. I could. It was almost like I could feel it. I could touch it. I could smell it because my, my spirit craved it and... I was putting in the work that led me to that divine moment where I discovered that this is the thing I'm born to do. Wow. Wow. Already I'm like, this is probably one of the best episodes ever. 
<laughs> and I think I say that every episode and I mean it every single time. <laughs> like I'm literally, as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is so good. Not for the podcast, but, but for me, like I will literally probably on the way home, listen to this again because, well, not probably I will, because like, this is stuff that we all need to hear. Not only do uh, I need to hear it. I feel like the, the, the people that are listening, I hope that y'all are grasping this like this this whole thing with manifesting it's it's real it's nothing hokey i used to think it was so hokey and like methodical and just like yeah. so weird but i started noticing the things that that i was saying and the things that i was believing or not believing they were or were not coming to me because i was believing or not believing it and now like i'm a i'm a strong believer and i wish that i would have uh, been able to tap into uh, somebody like you. And then when you start talking, I knew where you're going at because I heard you say you started calling yourself an international speaker uh, b before you even got to that point. And I seen a couple and based off of what you were saying, I started doing that too. I wanted to tell you that. And that's what I was going to tell you before we even started uh, recording it. I started claiming it. I'm going to be a, a, a top speaker, a top leadership speaker. You go to my website right now. That's what it says. Top leadership speaker. Yeah. For this podcast, I said, I want us to be a top. And now we're in the top uh, 10%. So I want to say thank you for, for dropping those gems out there. Um, and, and also one thing that I, that I was just thinking about, I need to do a better job in um, telling content creators and speakers and motivators and authors such as yourself like reaching back out to them and saying, hey, you said this, even though I didn't like it on Facebook or whatever, you said this and I, I want to say thank you. So I want to say thank you for that because I think that's so powerful. Um, did you always believe in, in manifestation like like that or? No. <laughs> okay. okay no. I don't feel alone. I mean, again, <laughs> considering my environment that I grew up in, you know, I wasn't taught personal development, professional development, you know, mindset, talking to yourself, how your subconscious mind were. I didn't, all I was care, all I cared about was making it out of poverty and scarcity and being able to get my mother out of poverty and scarcity. So, you know, I stayed in that cycle of just earn a paycheck and living paycheck to paycheck for a, for a long time, for a lot of my adult years. And um, it, it took work for me to get to a, a different place. It took a curiosity about what else was available. Um, it, it took me, again, disrupting everything I always believed and known to that point and tackling conversations, money conversations, conversations about fear. I had to face those things head on and be willing to not only disconnect and unplug the previous conversations, but to mm. plug into a new socket that gave me a new perspective. Right? Damn, so it's not enough to turn it off and turn it back on. You talking about plugging it in, taking it out and putting yeah. it into another. Oh my God. A whole new socket so that I can get a different circuitry going. So that took, when I say being uncomfortable, <laughs> I wasn't taught affirmations from a young child, young girl, young adult, young woman, right? This was so you figure I'm, you know, I'm in my thirties talking about some affirmations. I'm like this, like you said, this okey dokey hokey stuff is that, what is this? Right. And then you listen to things like the secret. And, and what I realized was Cheryl, you've already tried it the way, you know, how's that going for you? What is that producing for you? Are you living a life that you're in love with or are you just existing in life? And I was truly just existing in life. I wanted to live life. I wanted to thrive. I wanted, let me tell you what I really wanted. I wanted to create a different reality for my kids where even though I didn't come from wealth, my children would come from wealth. Wow. My grandchildren would come from wealth. My great grandchildren will come from wealth because I was willing to do something that made me so uncomfortable, but I was willing to do it anyway, to at least attempt it because I already knew what the other thing produced. I knew what toxic thinking produced. I knew what staying stuck in your own fears produced. So, okay, if that hasn't produced what I really desire at this season of my life, let's try it this way. Let's let's try saying some good stuff to yourself. So I remember before I even walked away from my full-time job and started pursuing entrepreneurship full-time, 
I used to wake up every morning. I would say this little mantra to myself before I even stepped out of the bed. I thank God for life and breath in my body. And then I would say, Cheryl, you are a magnet for success. You are a magnet for greatness. You are a magnet for wealth. Somebody somewhere in the world is waiting on you right now. They are waiting on you to show up. And then I would laugh because I still had to get up and get dressed and go to the job that I wasn't in love with. <laughs> but six months into doing that every single day without let up, even though I didn't see, I didn't see, tangibly see that changing things, I was changing inside. The intangible happens before the tangible produces. So I was being changed inside because of what I was saying to myself. And that's when I started learning about the concept of how the subconscious mind really works. The more you tell it something, the more it believes it. And if that's negative, that's the thing it's going to believe. If it's doubtful, that's what it's going to believe. But if it's positive, if it's inspiring, if it's uplifting, if it's hopeful, that is what it's going to believe because that's what you keep fueling it with. And then that's where the connection happens. The more you believe the positive, the uplifting, the inspiring, the possibilities, the more your actions start to come in alignment with your beliefs. So now my actions, my patterns, my attitude, my behaviors are reflective of my beliefs. Hmm. Now that starts to open new doors of opportunity for me. That, that gives me a spirit of curiosity to go out and explore what else is different. That gives me the courage to show up even when I don't understand why I'm really here in this room. That gives me the confidence to come to the front of the room even when I don't feel qualified. It gives me the courage to get back up when I get knocked down. So yes, it all starts with what we tell ourselves that sinks deeper into our subconscious mind that becomes a belief. And now our actions come into alignment with the belief. Oh, wow. That is so beautiful. Um... Yeah, I, I forgot that we were recording. I'm just like writing stuff down. <laughs> That's so good. I know that um, our viewers and our listeners, I know that they're saying, you know what? How do I get some of this stuff that Dr. Cheryl Wood is, is talking about? And I'm wondering that uh, myself, what uh, do, do you offer uh, coaching? Where can we go? Like, where do we go get the book? Like, where can we find your stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, connect with me all across social media at Cheryl Empowers because I'm always sharing inspiration and encouragement, empowerment. Um, and then go to my website, CherylEmpowers.com and just enter your name and email so that you can become a part of my VIP community list. And you'll get not only education and information from me, but also you'll get informed of different initiatives that I'm launching. Um, like right now, I am doing my fourth book project with the legend Les Brown. Here are the first three. Ah, like, how crazy is that, right? Oh, my God. First Wait, book you, project. Did you say four books with Les? Four book projects. So we collaborated for four book projects. Let me turn on the back. So 74 people contributed their stories as a part of this book anthology project, You Are Enough, that we just launched in 2021. Say then that word again. You said anthrolo <laughs> anthrology? Anthology, anthology, anthology. yep, Dr. Cheryl Wood. Wood. I love it. And then here's the second one we did Unleash Your Undeniable Impact. 76 more co authors were a part of that book project and compilation. And then this one is going to launch uh next week. Uh, and so that one we have 30 people who are a part of that project, and we have our fourth and final one that we're doing for 2022 called Dare to Rise Above Mediocrity, and that comes out in June. So there are always initiatives that I'm offering for leaders to come to the front of the room to share their story, their experiences, their expertise. We need your voice. Like, I can't do it all. I don't have the capacity to serve everyone. Tony, amazing leader. He doesn't have oh, the capacity to serve everyone. Thank you, Les Sandra. doesn't have the capacity to serve everyone. Lisa, my coach, I'll be in the Bahamas next week with Lisa. Uh, she doesn't have the capacity to serve everyone. We need your voice. We need you to come to the front of the room and stop hiding out in the background because you think that there's not space for you or you think your story isn't powerful enough. No, your voice is more powerful than you know. And you've got to know not only that it matters, but then you've got to be intentional about making your voice count as a leader. And the best way to make your voice count is to show up in spaces and share with others what you know. That's why Dr. Miles Monroe said the richest place on the earth is what? It's the cemetery. The cemetery. They take all their knowledge, all their greatness, all their gifts, everything they know, the experiences, and take it to the grave. Like, that's the worst place that we want to take it. We want to leave this place empty. And that means as a leader, it is your time to show up and come to the front of the room. So connect with me through my VIP community list at CherylEmpowers.com. And I do have a 
free online community through Facebook as well, Tony, called Global Speakers University. And so if you go, just go over to Facebook and type in the search bar, Global Speakers University, you can become a part of that community. I'm always dropping free, 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 for free nuggets and gems and strategies in that group because I know that there's enough for all of us. And my goal is to help make the world a place that is filled with more confident leaders who are coming to the front of the room and changing their own lives so that they can change the lives of the masses. Wow. Wow. Um, you you mentioned a little bit about um, your, your mentor. And um, <clears throat> when I just start thinking about um, mentorship and how important it is it is to have a mentor and I'll, and I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, something I dropped the ball on when I first started, uh, I started getting into speaking and I basically left corporate just like you did at one day I'm, I'm in the car and I'm just <laughs> like, I, I can't do this no more. I'm making over six figures, but I'm just miserable as, as I'll get out. And I just got into the game and I was talking to one of my good friends, uh, Summer, Summer Watson. And she's like, I want you to meet this amazing speaker. And uh, he's such an amazing blah, blah, blah. And in my head, I'm thinking, <laughs> why do I, why do I want to talk to another, another speaker for it? Aren't we in competition? I'm not thinking like that. Yeah. And she kept poking and poking. You got to do this. You got to talk to him. And then finally we talked and I got off the phone and I was sobbing because for the first time, somebody outside of my circle saw something great in me. It didn't even, this dude didn't even know me. So that's, that's one thing that, that I'm thinking about as far as uh, you know, the people that are listening and viewing this show is you got to get outside of your own circle so that you can have somebody like bring you up, somebody that can show you your strengths, somebody that can help you hone in on your weaknesses. And, and that's what I'm getting uh, from Dr. Cheryl Wood just from the short time that we've been together, man. I, I feel really inspired and I feel uh, I feel like I could just bust through that door <laughs> right there because I'm, I'm, I'm so inspired. Um, mentorship. And, and, Sorry, I talk. I get off on a tangent. I talk to the audience because I, I really, I, I want them to, to really hear and take away what's, what's going on here. But yes, be educated. I mean, be entertained, but also, be educated. This is something, something special. Uh, mentorship. How, um, in, was that a game changer for you? Mentorship. Oh, absolutely, a absolutely. And you know, I, for me, let me, let me be clear. I think that there's a subtle difference between mentorship and coaching. Mm -hmm. And I can have mentors who I never meet. And but it's their their journey kind of mentors me and guides me. Um, or a mentor might be someone who. They connect themselves to me in mentorship, because, as you mentioned, they see greatness in me and they're kind of the person who is a confidant. Um, I can share certain emotions and feelings I'm having while I'm on the journey, whether it's a high or it's a low. I can go to them for advice and guidance uh, as I'm experiencing different things on my journey. Right. And I feel like a lot of times mentorship happens organically yes. uh, versus you reaching out to somebody like, hey, can you mentor me? Well, I don't I'm sure know you, you get that all the time, too. Yeah, I do. I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. I don't. Right. Like, what's the real reason that I'm mentoring you? It's It's normally because I see someone. Maybe they're in my tribe or in my community and, and they are just like breaking down barriers and they're pressing through challenges and they won't give up. And I see greatness in them. And I, as the potential mentor, would approach them about mentorship. That's normally how all of my mentors have done. Um, but then coaching is when I take an intentional and strategic approach to my growth and my elevation. Yes. And that is through a financial investment. So I believe highly and strongly in coaching. So I have coached with Les Brown. I've coached with Lisa Nichols. I have coached laundry list with Susie Carter, who is Lisa's coach. Um, and the list goes on. I am always being coached by the greats, people who are already 20 to 30 steps ahead of me, but they don't give me the coaching for free. 
I invest in it because when I invest in it, there is an expectation. There's an expectation that I am investing in your strategies, your playbook, mm -hmm. the things that you know that I don't know. You helping me to figure out what's my next move, what's my next step. Not just I call you to share my how my day went. So it for me, it's very, very important that we invest in coaching and, and so that we can get strategic plays and a blueprint for how am I going to go from this point to this point. And that person who you're hiring to coach, now there's an accountability because you have invested in it. They're not just giving you their time when they have time. No, it's I have invested in your time. I have hired you for a specific deliverable. And that comes with a different expectation and level of accountability. So I believe that's been a major part of my growth because I only know what I know. And sometimes I don't even know what to ask because I've come to the end of the line as it relates to my own knowledge base. So now mm -hmm. I've got to get into a space with somebody who is 30 steps ahead of me because they're going to be able to guide me when I don't even know what the next question is that I should be asking. So they might say, well, have you considered this or have you considered this? Or they ask me a deep thought uh, uh, question that leads me to an awareness of, oh, I should also be doing this or considering this or executing this or I was missing this piece. That's the value of investing in yourself through coaching. Oh, I love that. I love that. I want to get your reaction. And I know you got to go. I just maybe just like six more minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to get your reaction to this, this video I stole from your YouTube. <laughs> I'm so he proud of you. I'm so proud of the woman you are. But also the courage I'm so to proud say, of she has what I want. She has become. the answer. And who I'm not going to make the wheel. I'm, gonna I'm proud of your I'm willingness to step into the world. I'm going to leverage. I'm going to maximize what concern. I see her teaching me because that's why she's teaching Look me. Look at what you're doing. And then I'm going to implement that Man, so that I sister, can get the results that I'm honored to be on the planet. And sure enough, at the same time as you. I listen to you. I observe you. I pay attention to what you say. If you Come give me a tweak here. here or there, I implement it because you're That's only where I want to be. You're 30 steps, 40 steps ahead of me. Wow. How does that make you feel? <sighs> you said bring a tissue box. You did say bring the tissue box. <laughs> that is, um, that makes me want to sob like a baby. Uh, because, <sighs> oh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, when I started this journey, I, I used to go to conferences and I would be the person sitting in the seat crying because I knew I wanted to be the person on stage and I had no clue how I was going to get there, Tony. I didn't have any connections. I didn't have money in the bank account to hire the coaches I wanted to hire initially. All I had was a strong work ethic. I had a heart desire. I had passion, I had energy. And I had this determination and commitment in my soul that I would not be denied. I will not be denied. And the world will know my name because God did not put me here just to wallow in an existence. He put me here to touch lives, to impact people globally who I may never meet. But my words, the sound of my voice, my encouragement, my inspiration, my example is somehow going to create legacy and change their lives. And I didn't know how. And so to be here in this chapter 12 and to watch a video like that is just a reminder of all the times that I prayed that I would get here. And to be in the dream, like I was praying about the dream, working for the dream, and almost like I woke up and now I'm in the dream. I'm living the dream, which tells me it's time to move the finish line, right? Because there's more to be done is just... Um, it is a reminder that you can do anything you put your mind to. Mind over matter. And your expectation can never be bigger than your execution. Ever. You've got to execute. There's a quote I live by. You never get what you deserve. You only get what you demand. And I will keep showing up and demanding that the world pay attention to my voice. I will keep showing up and demanding that I create a legacy that will long outlive my physical body. And I challenge everybody to live your life in that way because we only get a few short years, right? We get a few short years to live the best life we can live. And I want my legacy to be where people are telling some juicy stories, Tony, mm -hmm. about their interaction with me, their engagement with me. I, I, I envision people sitting around a little fire pit 
and talk about, yeah, I remember when Dr. Cheryl, when she did this and she said this to me and her best advice to me was this. And she helped me to start my radio show and she helped me to get on that big stage. She Like those are the stories I want shared when I am physically no longer here. Nobody's going to be talking about, oh, them red bottoms she wore, they was the bomb. Or how much <laughs> money she made, right? Oh, she was the best millionaire. No, they're going to be sharing stories about how I touch their lives. So I'm wow. very intentional about my purpose, not just profits. Profits is important. I, I praise God that I'm now a million dollar earning business oh, that's yes. from the ground and, and now I'm here. But purpose is bigger than anything else because that will keep your legacy going. So thank you for sharing that. I have not watched that video in quite some time. And that just emotionally stirred my heart and my soul and reminded me that now it's time for me to bring up the next generation of amazing speakers who I'll be doing videos like that for. So we mm -hmm. lift as we climb, always lifting as we climb. Wow, that's amazing. And, and you actually have a, a platform that you do for speakers at uh, SpeakerCon, correct? Yes, SpeakerCon. Oh my goodness, my baby. Even that, Tony, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter how much you grow, like fear is there to try to, to pull you back, to try to convince you that no, this isn't for you because I slept on the SpeakerCon idea probably for almost two years. And I kept looking around. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a con, a convention for everything. There's a cookie con. There's comic con. There's t-shirt con. Bubble I'm like, gum where, gum. Bubble gum con. <laughs> where is the convention, <laughs> like the national convention for speakers, like people who are transforming the world one word at a time. Words have power. Words can build you up or tear you down. So we have a big responsibility as speakers and leaders. Where is the convention where we get to come and connect and learn and grow and celebrate each other? And I kept looking and kept looking. I'm like, oh my God, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. And I, I, the thought came to me to do speaker con. And then I talked myself out of it for a year and a half because I said, I can't possibly be the one who's supposed to execute this. Wow. Not when there's this person in the market and that person, and they've been doing it longer than me and they're a master and they're a master speaker. Who am I to say, I'm going to be the person who's going to lead this movement. And I finally got out of my way. And I was like, look, girl, your whole journey, you've been disrupting. You've been interrupting, disrupting, unplugging and plugging into new sockets. It is time to plug into this socket of belief in yourself that if this vision was given to you, if it was downloaded to you, it is meant for you to execute. Now get up off your butts and execute. But Ooh. I'm not. But I, no, we don't have time for that. Execute. And so we launched SpeakerCon in 2019. It was live in 2019. We had about 300 plus people who came to that conference. And then, of course, we came into the pandemic. So we've been virtual for the past two years, but we will be live again for 2022. We already got the venue locked in for this year, right? We're in 2022 now. I got to remember that. And um, just excited and so happy that I chose to execute it, even in spite of my own hesitation, because that's when you get to the opposite side and you discover greatness and you discover possibility and you discover the next level and the next version of you is when you press through the things that you thought, wow, that's too big for me. No, there's no idea, no dream that's too big for you to execute if you put your heart and your soul and your energy and passion into it. And of course, some strategy and some intention and some planning. So yeah, yeah speaker con is every November uh, 2022. This year is November 2nd through the 5th. And we'll it'll be a hybrid. We'll do have live and we'll have uh, virtual and it is changing and transforming lives. So I am honored to say I am the founder of SpeakerCon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think that's dope. I think that you're you're incredible. Um, Thank you. And some of the things that um, that I've been writing down is, you know, keep showing up, say yes, even though you don't feel like you're equipped, um, and just just keep going. Just keep going. And I hope that um, everyone else is is getting this. I hope that. Uh, this is bless your heart as much as it is blessed mine. Uh, I want to tell you, thank you for showing up and thank you for saying yes to me because I know that you didn't have to. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world. Keep it up. I'll be watching you. I'll be stalking you. I mean, following you. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't feel bad. I do the same thing. Thank you so much. Uh, much hang out a second. Uh, again, uh, I want to tell you all, thank you for making this possible. Thank you for making uh, Leaders Lead a top 10 podcast. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not a big deal. That is a big deal to me. And I'm going to take it. 
that's a big deal because it is a big deal because this show is about you and you're a big deal. So I want to say thank you. Make sure that you check out an episode, uh, our episodes, Leaders Lead the Podcast, every single Monday, dropping at 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, thank you and be well. Ooh, that was great. If you enjoyed this podcast, well, I'm sure you enjoyed it. If you're still here with us, what I want you to do is head over to your favorite podcast and streaming network and give us a download, subscribe to the channel, and also let us know what you think about the show. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for the things that you've done. Thank you for the things that you're doing. And especially thank you for the things that you're going to do, because I know that you're going to do something amazing. All right, cool. It, can I ask you for one more favor before we yes, go? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm always begging. Uh, <laughs> is there any way that uh, <laughs> that uh, if you can say, if you gotta go, you gotta go. If I can get a quick drop, maybe you could say, "Hey, this is uh, yeah. Dr. Cheryl Wood. You know, do your stuff. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. me, really quick. That way, I could put it uh, put it on social media and stuff like that. Are you cool with that? Yes. Is it is it a script that you want me to say something specific? Yeah, maybe just say, hey, this is uh, Dr. Cheryl Wood, the, Dr. Cheryl Wood, founder of Comic-Con, you know, a little bit of your cred credentials, credential swag. Uh, this is Leaders Lead the Podcast or say something cool about the show okay, or, or got whatever. It. All right, cool. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, how do I do this? All right, whenever you're ready. Oh, what do I do? <laughs> I took you out. Okay. Okay. So you just want me to go when I'm ready? Hey, this is Dr. Cheryl Wood, international empowerment speaker, two time TEDx speaker, 17 time best selling author, and founder of SpeakerCon. And I am here for the Leaders Lead podcast with my good friend, Tony Taylor. Make sure you stay connected and plugged in to this station of inspiration, empowerment, and uplifting. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, is there anything that I can that I can do to su support you? You know what? I have a project that I'm working on. This, now, this depends on how, how quick you can move, how quick you execute. So I'm actually doing <laughs> <laughs> I a community initiative. Um, one of the things I want to be a lot more intentional about for 2022 is giving back and serving my community. So one of the ways I decided that I'm going to serve my community through my Global Speakers University for 2022 is to launch a book initiative called mm -hmm. Hope Renewed. And it's all about uh, inspirational messages to renew the human spirit because people have been through so much over the past 24 months. So the book will be uh, everything will be covered under my company. We'll publish it. We'll cover all the costs. We're doing all that. But the book is going to be 100 inspirational messages from 100 global speakers. Um, and I would love for you to send me a 100 word inspirational message that can be included as a part of the book. We're not selling the book. It will only be given away. Our goal is to distribute 10,000 copies of the book throughout the, the community for this year. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when do you need it? When do you need it by? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> It's just that you gotta get put together a profound 100 words, and I can I can shoot you over the jot uh, the jot form. Les Brown has already committed. We already have his message. Doc, I don't know if you know Dr. George Frazier for the Power Networking Conference. I think uh, I heard of him through an oh. interview that you did with Brother, uh, Brother Bedford. Yeah, with with Brother Bedford. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, phenomenal. One of our elders, right? So, uh, Dr. Frazier, Les Brown. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other, a bunch of people. So a hundred, it'll be a hundred speakers, but I would love to have you contribute to that. Um, I had like, I selected, hand selected all the people that I wanted to participate. And I had like 10 spots left and I'm like, okay, God, guide me as, as to who's supposed to be these final 10 people. And I just, oh my God. I feel led that you are supposed to be a part of this project. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. And you need it tomorrow for real? For real. Okay. All right. <laughs> No, I can oh, do that. Or, I mean, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say beyond tomorrow, but tomorrow will be great. Okay, uh, no, I can do that. I will run that play. I will work on that. Um, and it's, it, 
a, a lesson for the community, correct? Yeah, it's it's basically I want it to be a book where anyone can open up to any page in the book and automatically their whole energy is shifted by a message of inspiration that they are reading. So it's going to it's almost, um, you know, I know a lot of times we talk about niching things down. This is a little bit more, you know, kind of broad, uh, just inspirational, powerful, empowering words to remind people to either get back up or remind them to, to commit to being committed, or you can press through this storm that you're going through, or anything that would make someone feel more hopeful and energized and want to get back up, that's what we want, that type of okay. message. And 100 you words, that. I can you do, can do that. that in your sleep. You can do that in your sleep, Tony. No, I definitely can. Dude, yeah. that, that's such an honor. <laughs> I would do that. I asked you, how can I help you? And you just, that's a blessing to me. Um, I love it. Yeah. Just know that well, we're, gonna stay connected. we're gonna stay connected for sure. Cause I love yeah. you. Thank you. Just know that anything that you need help from me from like is it is at your disposal. Thank you. And I'll make sure that I get this to you. You want me to email it to you? Um yeah, I, well, I'm gonna send you the jot form right now. Let me let me look up your Tony Taylor. There you are right here. Um, so let me re reply and then do just change subject, um, your 100 word message. And let me jump over here and grab the job form real quick. That view. You know, all of my experience, the funny part is all of my experience as a legal secretary has served me so well in, the, in this business, right? Are you serious? Oh my God, like the communication skills, the organization skills, you know, orchestrating things, being able to quickly pull from this. And because as a legal secretary, I was always, you know, like juggling multiple priorities at the same time. And it has served me so well. That's why I say every part of your journey is meant to be. It, it's there for a reason. Wow, so, that's funny that, that you say that. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just trashing my degree in fire science the other day. Like, man, this is not, this is, it's not serving me. And just like looking back at my, like me being in the military stuff, I'm like, man, I wish I would have gotten to speaking so much sooner. Man, I could have been in the game for 20 years and just, you know, I, I spiral sometimes in my head, just like, just like the rest of us. But I'm, I'm glad that you said that because there, there is something that I can, I and anybody else can take from uh, what they had. That's, that's yeah. Funny. And you know what it's going to happen, what, what will happen, I believe is you, First of all, you had to go through those experiences to get here, to learn, to, to value that you've discovered what you are supposed to be doing. Because yeah. how would you value it if you always knew it? You wouldn't even have anything to compare it to. Yeah. And number two, it's going to make you that much more valuable to the people that you're called to serve because there's somebody who is going to be like, well, I can't I can't leave my good government job or I can't walk away from everything I know from the military and do this thing that's passion. No way. That would be crazy. And now you become the poster child for it might be crazy, but yes, it's possible. So it everything. I'll, I'll like, write that down. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes, it's crazy, but yes, it's possible. Like it, all of it is, it's supposed to be a part of. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Bro, I really cool. appreciate it. You're such a blessing. And I will make sure I get this to you tomorrow. I promise. Thank you. And please give my love to your wife and thank her for lending, lending you to us, to the world, to inspire and lead us. We, we need more leaders. So please thank you because it is a sacrifice on her part too. Just like my family, they sacrifice when I'm on calls all hours of the night. And I have a call I do on Mondays, a speaker training. That darn call goes from 7 p.m. to about 1130 at night. Oh, and it is long. It is long. But my family take a back seat when I'm doing that. So I always like to thank the people who are surrounding the people who are leaders because we're not doing it on our own. We got support behind the scenes. So uh, thank you for saying that. People. My yeah. little kid and tell you, your family as well. My little kids, they kicked me out of the house. They said, we're so tired of hearing I'm, ah. I'm live or I'm recording. That's why we ended up in this place. <laughs> so thank you for saying that. Look, for the longest time, Tony, I didn't have an office. Now I have this beautiful office because, you know, it's growth and elevation, right? Oh, yeah. For the longest time, my office was in the in the dining room, at the dining room table. And so yeah, they couldn't, yeah. I was right next to the kitchen, so they couldn't heat up food. They couldn't make noise. Like it was, it was a test. But when you stick with it and stay committed, then you grow, you elevate. Now I have an office. I can close the door and nobody don't have to hear me. So wow. it just 
yeah, it's a journey. It's a that's tra- amazing. Chapter twelve, but woo, chapters one through eleven. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so inspired. I'm inspired to get to chapter twelve. Thank you so much, and yes. have a have a good night. And you too. Uh, I, yeah, I from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you. Absolutely. Keep doing what you're doing. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wow. That just happened.